long, long ago, like before your grandparents' grandparents' rocks were even rocks, life was partying hard in the ocean. Everything was floaty, squishy, and happily unaware of gravity. It was basically an all-you-can-graze buffet for tiny sea blobs. But then one fish, let's call him Gary, looked at the dry, lifeless shore and thought, yeah, that looks fun. Spoiler, it wasn't. But Gary, with his weird little leg fins, flopped his way onto land like a wet sock with dreams. Was Gary a genius? A hero? A mistake? Yes. The first few land explorers were half fish, half lizard, and 100% uncoordinated. They wheezed in the open air, blinked awkwardly at the sun, and crawled into ferns that didn't even have the decency to offer shade. But somehow, they survived. They grew lungs, legs, and a fondness for crunchy bugs. Evolution was like, sure, let's go with it, and amphibians were born. Part-time swimmers, full-time gasping disasters. And thus, the great journey onto land began, with a flop, a gasp, and a whole lot of regret. So, after the great crawl out, things got weird. Amphibians, those soggy overachievers, started dabbling in land life. But they had one major flaw. They still needed to dunk themselves in water to lay eggs, which, let's be honest, is like needing to return to your ex's house every time you want a kid. Not ideal. Enter the reptiles, nature's first attempt at a proper land animal. Scaly, dry-skinned, egg-laying trailblazers who strutted around like they owned the planet. Which, to be fair, they kind of did, for a while. Evolution was in full chaos mode. Creatures were growing legs in weird places, eyeballs were migrating, and tails were the new black. Some reptiles turned massive, others were tiny and ran like caffeinated chickens. Plants weren't slacking either. Trees showed up. Forests exploded into existence. It was a botanical free-for-all. Giant dragonflies buzzed overhead like prehistoric drones, and early lizards lounged under leaves like they invented chilling. Basically, Earth turned into a giant experimental lab where Mother Nature said, let's try everything all at once. And guess what? Dinosaurs were just around the corner waiting for their big entrance. But first, nature had to work out some kinks. Boom. Enter the dinosaurs. Mother Nature's overcorrection. After millions of years of tweaking, the evolutionary dial cranked itself to maximum drama. Dinosaurs exploded onto the scene in every shape, size, and attitude. Some were the size of buses, Others were basically angry chickens with teeth. They stomped, soared, roared, and occasionally ran face first into trees. There were plant eaters as big as buildings, meat eaters with arms too short to high five, and feathered weirdos still figuring out what a wing was even for. It was the ultimate prehistoric park. Earth was one giant theme park full of angry lizards and massive ferns, and nobody was wearing sunscreen. The air was thick with buzzing insects the size of drones. Volcanoes belched casually in the background, and everything either hunted or ran for its life. Survival tip, don't trip. And while they didn't know it yet, these scaly celebrities were about to rule the Earth for over 150 million years, which is longer than any reality show, government, or boy band has ever lasted. Welcome to the Cretaceous period. A time when dinosaurs got weirder, flashier, and somehow even more dramatic. This was peak dinosaur civilization. Feathers were officially in. Horns, frills, crests, sails. Dinosaurs were basically walking fashion statements. Nature turned the volume up to 11 and said, why not give that thing a three-foot head ornament? The herbivores? Giant walking buffets with built-in armor plating. The carnivores? Faster, sneakier, and moodier than ever. And some dinos started parenting their young. Aww. Turns out even prehistoric monsters had a soft side. Flowers also decided to show up, adding pops of color to the leafy green chaos. Bees came buzzing in like, we're here to ruin picnics for the next hundred million years. In the skies? Birds? Yes, literal dinosaurs. Flapped around being smug about it. Below, 
Creatures like the Triceratops strutted around like they owned the Cretaceous. Everything was thriving. Dinosaurs were everywhere, strutting, roaring, and being absolutely fabulous. And they had no idea a space rock the size of a mountain was barreling toward Earth with zero chill. The Cretaceous was going great, until it really wasn't. One fine day, while dinosaurs were busy eating, stomping, or yelling at each other, the sky decided to throw a mountain at Earth. An asteroid the size of a city came in hot, like, literally, 20,000 miles per hour hot, and ruined everyone's weekend. First came the flash, then the firestorms, then the skies turned to ash like Mother Nature hit the dimmer switch, permanently. Plants died, herbivores starved, carnivores followed, and the global food chain said, nope. T-Rex, toast, triceratops, done. The only ones who made it out were small, adaptable, and probably already anxious. Birds, mammals, and that one smug crocodile who still hasn't changed. Thus ended the reign of the dinosaurs with a bang so big it literally redrew the map. But don't feel too bad. They ruled for over 150 million years. That's longer than humans have figured out how to not eat laundry detergent. So next time a pigeon looks at you like it owns the place, just remember, it kind of does. Its ancestors survived the apocalypse while the king of the dinos got punked by space debris.